Chris Recchia. I am going to be your chair this evening for the Rel uh, Randolph Development Review Board. We're uh, Monday, June 17th, 2019 in Chandler Music Hall, um, Upper Gallery. I want to thank you all for coming. Uh, if you haven't signed in already, I'd ask that you do that because we'd like to know um, who's here. Um, we're going to go through our agenda and what I do, uh, well, let me introduce everybody first, uh, starting way down on my right. I'm Laura Sanchez, I'm the administrator. Matt Murawski. Paul Putney. John Hart. Dan DeVoe. Josh Estereas. Bill McGrath. So we're all here, and um, we are the Development Review Board. We apply the zoning regulations uh, for the town of Randolph. Um, we're going to go through the agenda, which has several items on it. And uh, the first item, though, is the public to be heard about anything that's not on the agenda. So does anyone have anything they want to comment on that is not an item on the agenda? OK, seeing none. Um, we'll go on to the first application. So Rudolph and Harold Lambert, correct? Right. Who, who is speaking right to that? Thank you. So this is a little different setup than we're used to. Um, we have microphones right here, the tape. This is, uh, the hearing is being recorded for all of these applications and it does become part of the record. Um, I think where you are is fine. If any el anyone else wants to speak to this application or other applications, I'm going to ask that you somehow come up to a front seat or stand up here where we can um, see you and hear you. But yes, um, so could you uh, introduce yourself, please, and raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth so far as it pertains to this application? I do. And would you state your name for the record, please? Harold Lamprak. Thank you, Harold. So would you um, tell us about your application, please? OK. It, I'm in the, process, in the process of trying to subdivide a, a, a large piece of acreage. Yes. So Can I stop you there? I'm sorry. Yeah. You didn't say anything wrong. Oh. Can everybody hear him no. from there? OK. So I'm going to give you the microphone. I'm sure they're all here for the subdivision application yeah. anyway. <laughs> I'm subdividing a 72-acre piece of property that's been in the family for over 55 years. There's a 11 to 12-acre piece that's right along Route 14, uh, right north of, if everybody knows, uh, Giffords property. And we've divided it uh, into about 11 and a half acres. And yeah, there's a house on there. And there's a, a large barn, and that's the piece that's going to be divided, subdivided off from the rest. The other uh, 60 to 61 acres will be kept in the family uh, for many, many years to just enjoy the Vermont property. My brother lives in Massachusetts, my brother Rudy, and I live in New Jersey, and the rest of the family is spread out throughout the entire country where we do still come up here to meet to uh, still enjoy the property. But the main thing is subdividing the piece that you see probably in the maps you see right there. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, you know, just in the process of getting the final approval so that uh, we can sell the property. We actually do have a buyer that's somebody that's right here in Randolph that is going to be moving into the house, buying it, moving in and uh, continuing to use it as a property for their families. Yep. Yeah. Anything else? Yes, probably. <laughs> we, uh, don't go away, because um, this is going to be. Uh, do we have any other microphones, Marty, here? Because that would make things easier. Oh, well, there's one there, but press. There's a lot of room right in front of us. Yeah, that, that'll be used later. But maybe we could bring this up for people. Thank you. You can hand that to Thank you. That'll make it a little easier. Um, so a question I have is about the back lot. Um, could you describe the access to the, to the back lot? You said you have a seller, you have a buyer for the, is it for the house and the barn? Yeah, the house, flat? the barn, and all the road frontage, all the road frontage yes. is going to stay with the piece that's subdivided. Yes. The original driveway will stay intact, which is left of the home that's been existing there for hundreds of years. And the right of way will go to the right of the property, which is basically the access point that was there, again, for hundreds of years, that went up through, there was a logging road that went through the property that goes straight up through 
the property on the right hand side cuts over up into a ton bridge. Okay, so there will be an access to the back lot. Correct. And it's a fifty foot right away. Yeah, and I see the fifty foot wide utility easement. Is that the same? The access yes. easement is yeah, the same. That's basically utility. for the road and if you have to have okay. any power or anything yeah, that goes gotcha. along there, yes. Okay, thank you. Thanks very much. Um, do any of the board members have questions? Do any of the audience members have questions? Any of the audience? Is this a question or a comment? Well, the reason I ask is I have to swear you in if it's a comment, but if it's a question, I don't need to swear you in. Okay. Uh, question. Go ahead, please. There you go. Okay, thank you. But if you could state your name, please, that would be my helpful. Name, my name is Larry Riven, R E V I T. Thank you. Uh, and uh, uh, I. I would like to ask what, I mean, maybe this is premature and, and it's going to be answered, but what, what, if anything, is going to be done to mitigate light pollution coming from the property? Um, okay, we're on a subdivision application at the moment. This is not the hotel. Oh. Okay, this is just the well, you know, uh, <laughs> I blew it already. There you go. <laughs> so, there you go. All right. So, uh, but I'll if, if, if right. Mr. Lambrecht wants to answer the question about the lighting, no. you know. <laughs> okay. Can I finish the question? Uh, no, wait, right. wait until we're on that application if you don't mind. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. That's great. Um, any other comments or questions on this application? <laughs> Okay, seeing none, um, board, what's your pleasure? I'll move to approve the application. Thank you, Dan, there's a move to approve it. Second that. We have a second from Matt, thank you. Any, uh, any discussion? Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, congratulations, thank you. Thank you very much. Yep, don't take the microphone with you. I have a suspicion we're gonna need it later. Thank you. Okay, um, we're gonna go on to the next application, which is Gifford Medical Center. But what I will say is, the, what, what I just did is what I intend to do throughout the evening, which is hear from the applicant, have the board ask questions, have the public ask questions, for which you do not need to be sworn in, and then go to comments from the public. If there are comments from the public, then I need to swear you in. And uh, if you could be careful about distinguishing those two, that would be really helpful. So uh, the next application is uh, Gifford Medical Center. Request for a waiver of a local Act 250 review pursuant to section 805C3 for the removal of two and four Maple Street. The properties are in the Randolph Village High Density District. So who is here to speak to that application? Uh, Doug Fole. Doug, would you raise your right hand? You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth so far as it pertains to this application? I do. Thank you. So uh, Mr. Fole, would you tell us about what Gifford's proposing here? Uh, sure. We're just um, looking for local Act 250 waiver uh, because the projects are actually demolition and no new construction, mm -hmm. uh, taking down two and four Maple Street uh, buildings that have little significance to the hospital um, to make green space. So, so strictly demolition, removal of foundation, and uh, planting of grass for green space. Okay. Um, any questions from the board? I have a question now. Yep. What were these buildings used for previously? Uh, two Maple Street was our former HR building, and now it's used for storage. The heat, the water uh, are all disconnected. Uh, power is disconnected. Um, four Maple Street, there's an office for our auxiliary. Uh, they run the thrift store, and we have some on-call housing as well as some storage. So, um, being in the uh, uh, high density district, obviously we have a need for housing and other businesses and things like that. Can I ask what the condition of buildings in that caused you to decide to demolish them as opposed to reuse them? 
Um, we run a medical facility, and uh, the majority of our clinical space needs you know higher end, more modern uh, technology that we need to kind of work in. So uh, the space is uh, basically uh, it's a previous residential home, and it doesn't suit the needs of what what business we do do there. So. Mm -hmm. So Green Space does them. Green Space is uh, yeah. motivated for our staff. Mm -hmm. and, uh, <clears throat> Other questions from the board? Not a question, but I want to point out for anyone in the audience wondering, we don't actually, as a board, have jurisdiction over a demolition project. So they're asking for Act 250 waiver. They have to get an Act 250 permit because the hospital is under an Act 250, under Act 250 jurisdiction. So we can waive our review of the local part of the Act 250 review process if we don't have jurisdiction over the project to begin with. In this case, we don't have jurisdiction over the project to begin with. So that's, what, that's what's happening. Yeah, and to, add to, and to add to that, the local Act 250 review is really based on its impact on the services of the town, so things like fire or schools or things like that, which you might get from a development that added those things, but would be difficult to come by by those things that um, were demolition. So thank you, Matt. Any other questions or comments from the board? Yeah. Uh, board motion. I'd like to um, I'll, I'll, I'll make a motion to uh, approve the Act 250, the local waiver of the Act 250. Yeah. Okay. That's request. Thank you, Matt. Second. Seconded by um, by Bill. Thank you. Any other discussion? Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. One for me. And the motion passes. Yes, I did. I did. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. We're going to move on now to. Get my agenda back. Thank you very much. My agenda go. Is that right? No, it's yours. Okay, great. All right, so we're going to move on to item number four, Farm Developing LLC. This is a site plan, conditional use, and local Act 250 reviews for a hotel, restaurant, and conference center facility on Route 66. The property is in the Interchange South East District. And again, um, we're going to go through the same process of hearing from the applicant, then having the board ask questions, and then open it up for questions from the, from the public, and then comments from the public. Um, I would ask that we have specific rules and regulations that we are in, intending to uh, implement here. So if you do have a comment, when you get to that point, if you're able to cite a particular part of the regulation that you're concerned with, that would be very helpful. So uh, for now, I'll turn it over to the applicant. Um, can I ask if everyone who is going to be speaking to this application, could you raise your right hand and I'll see how many there are. Oh, good, there are a lot of you. All right, so um, do you all swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth so far as it pertains to this application? Yes. Great. Would you all state your names, please, starting here? My name is Brian Lane Carnes. I'm with DeWolf Engineering and the Project Civil Engineer. Thank you, Brian. Uh, my name is Paul Ray. I'm the R in Farm. Okay. <laughs> Very good. And then I saw several back here. Yeah. Stephen Roy with Wheeling Lane, your architects. Bob Apple, we lead a management company. Ed Murphy, farm applicant. Anyone else that was that I missed? Okay. Thank you. So we'll go right ahead. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, so as you said, the project that is proposed is uh, an 89 room hotel uh, in one building and an associated uh, 152 seat restaurant and 400 seat conference center um, in Jason building. Can you speak up? Yeah, that microphone. You should have to pull closer to you, please. Better? Yeah, but you're leaning over. I think that's going to fade with time. Can you lift the microphone up toward you? Thank you. Yeah, I think that'll be better for you. No one short's going to be able to testify. Uh, yeah, I, that's why I have my own down here. 
so as you can see uh, on the location map that I have on the screen here now, uh, the project parcel is to the east of the uh, Interstate 89 interchange. Um, so it's marked with the text project location, uh, and it's centered in the uh, open field that you can see uh, on the map there. Um, just so everyone can get oriented um, to the north of the project, the sort of large building you can see there is the former Vermont Pure uh, facility. Um, to the west of that is the park and ride. Um, that development right there is the um, Morgan Orchards Senior Living Community. Uh, and That is the uh, McDonald's and gas station on the other side of the highway. Uh, this sheet is a, an overview of the general site plan. This building here is the 80 unit hotel. Uh, there's a per crochet for drop off in the front uh, and a one story extension on the back here that will have a, an indoor pool. Um, this building over here is the restaurant conference center. Uh, the restaurant is generally in the northern half of the building and the conference center is generally in the southern half of the building. Um, the access to the site is at the location more or less of an existing uh, farm access uh, up into the site. Um, there'll be a limited amount of tree clearing between here and there uh, along the front edge to provide visibility for the site from the road and then also uh, traffic safety for people entering and exiting the site. Parking areas are distributed uh, around the site. Um, so on all four sides of the hotel, oh, sorry, on three sides of the hotel, uh, there's parking, there's access around all four sides of the hotel, which is um, designed to be sufficient for uh, fire access all the way around. Um, and then there's this additional bay of parking uh, to the north of the hotel uh, and a bay of parking behind the restaurant and conference center that's going to be uh, intended for employee use. Um, these parking spaces on the west side of the site, excuse me, are intended for larger vehicles, say uh, someone with a pickup truck and a snowmobile trailer. Um, there's a, an adjacent vast trail, so we expect that there'll be some visitors to the hotel that are there for snowmobiling and we've uh, given them a place to park out of the way. Uh, in the southeast corner of the site here uh, is going to be an open grass area that uh, will be utilized for uh, occasional uh, events and they put up a tent in that area uh, to accommodate that. And there is a designated area of grassed overflow parking uh, if that uh, tented events are not also using the restaurant and conference center facilities. Uh, up here in the northeast corner of the site is the stormwater treatment wetland. Um, all of the drainage for the site will be captured in an underground drainage system, system of catch basins and piping, and piped to the stormwater treatment wetland uh, for both water quality and flood control before it being discharged to an existing uh, culvert under Oak Ridge Lane here. Uh, that's the general overview of the project. Uh, I don't know if it's the pleasure of the board to jump into criteria or if you have a few questions first. Yeah, no, I, I think uh, unless the board is anxious to ask questions, I'd, I'd prefer you continue on, go through the criteria okay. where you are. Uh, so the site is designed to meet the dimensional requirements of the Interchange Southeast District. Um, the board members uh, will likely have the cover letter that I prepared. There's a table on the first page uh, listing the dimensional requirements. Um, so most of the requirements are, are met and more by the site, uh, including um, building coverage and lot coverage. So the, the lot itself is um, almost 26 acres. Um, so building coverage uh, is two, just over 3% of the site. Um, and lot coverage, so including all of the building and then all the impervious areas, just parking, sidewalks, and so forth, uh, is just over 13% of the site. Um, setbacks can be seen on this plan, uh, including the 170 foot setback for buildings and parkings from the center line of Route 66 along this curved line here. Um, we are requesting uh, a height waiver under section 225.3. C.3.A, um, which you can 
uh, I'll talk about more specifically later. Um, so, continuing on down through the criteria, um, I'm, I'm going to follow the order of my letter here. Uh, so we'll start with conditional use review. Um, the project should have no significant effects on uh, community facilities. Um, we've had all of our uh, requisite local Active 50 reviews, so the project's been approved with um, a few conditions from the Fire Services Advisory Committee, and we just issued a uh, wastewater allocation by the select board uh, at their June 14th meeting. Um, water supply will be from an on-site drilled well, um, and so the project will be permitted as um, a non-transient, non-community public water system. Um, we don't expect the project to have any significant impact on schools. Um, while there may be some positions where people come in from out of town, we expect the majority of the jobs that will be generated by this project to be filled from the local applicant pool. Um, the effect of the project on the character of the area. Um, generally in the interchange district there's a, a whole set of additional regulations that are intended to establish and maintain the, the character of the area of the interchange around Interstate 89. Um, so the project has certainly been designed to meet all of the specific interchange district uh, regulations. Um, there's also several uh, areas of the town plan that the project apply, uh, complies with. Um, protection of geographic and natural features. So the main natural features of the site, um, there's a, a stream in a drainage ditch along the Route 66 uh, right-of-way. So to the east of the project, it runs along the south side where the project is. It's conveyed into culvert to the north side and it comes back on the south side down in this area. Um, so the project has essentially no effect on the stream. The uh, closest disturbance to it is at the right-of-way, um, but that's adjacent to the um, headwall of the culvert. Uh, where the stream is conveyed under the road. So, and the drainage from the roadway at that point is directed away from the stream, so it should really have uh, no impact there. Um, I would also note that the stream is in a really a constructed riprap ditch uh, to the north, or sorry, to the east of the project here where we're making our closest impact. Um, another natural feature of the site is a class two wetland, which is delineated uh, in this area to the uh, east of the site. Uh, we'll be maintaining a 50-foot buffer uh, at the minimum to the, to the class two wetlands, so uh, un, you know a natural buffer. So um, not expected to have any impacts to the wetland. Um, this almost the entire site, except for the wetland area, is um, mapped as primary agricultural soils. Um, as part of the Act 250 review process, um, we are going to be negotiating a mitigation agreement. Uh, with the Agency of Agriculture for impacts to primary agricultural soils. Um, the project's generally been clustered as much as possible in the center of the site um, to minimize uh, the amount of impact. Um, and we expect that that agreement will be a combination of on-site and off-site mitigation. Um, but in any case, we'll be following the ratios and formulas that the Agency of Agriculture has developed for impacts to primary agricultural soils. Uh, I think we discussed municipal services. Um, and then uh, another uh, policy of the, of the town plan is encouraging a variety of land uses. So this project is going to have a positive impact on um, a lot of uh, the local economy and local business. So it's going to add to the variety of land uses that are already developed in the interchange area and then also provide um, badly needed temporary housing to support many of the other local uh, institutions, such as the hospital, BTC, um, local businesses that are trying to pull in um, applicants with jobs, you know, and even kids visiting nearby colleges like Norwich University. Um, and uh, the project is also designed uh, to meet the purposes of the interchange land use district, um, which are to encourage a limited mix of land uses primarily commercial in nature um, and provide employment for the region. Um, protecting scenic views, open field and woodlands, visible from Route 66, uh, traffic safety of Route 66 and access to I-89 and natural features. Um, so I think we've talked about the mix of land uses, um, 
we can address the scenic views uh, when we get into the energy specific standards. We have a viewshed study that I'll present to the board as well. Um, and then we just discussed natural features as well. Um, traffic impacts are the next um, criteria under conditional use review. Um, the information that's presented in the um, cover letter uh, has been supplemented by a traffic impact assessment that was prepared at the request of the Agency of Transportation um, when we applied for our letter of intent to get access uh, to the state right away. Uh, we requested the traffic impact assessment. So, um, Lamer and Dickinson prepared traffic impact assessment, which I'll just sort of summarize for you. Um, one of the reasons they asked us to prepare a traffic assessment was even though the Institute of Traffic Engineers uh, Troop Generation Manual includes restaurant use inside of hotel use, they asked us to estimate that the trips that would be generated by the restaurant separately from the trips that would be generated by the hotel and the conference center. Um, so I think I referenced uh, using the ITE manual in the letter, uh, 59 trips in the PM peak hour. Um, when you count the restaurants separately, um, that uh, goes up to 111 trips in the PM peak hour. So that was the basics of traffic study that was prepared. Um, so that's um, a higher estimate of traffic impacts. Uh, even with that higher estimate of traffic impacts, there was um, no impact to level of service at the uh, project Drive at the Interstate 89 interchange or at the um, Route 66 intersection up at the top of the hill by Randolph Center. Um, both in the, you know, so comparing not building the hotel to building the hotel, they compared it in 2020, which is the year we're looking at the hotel opening, and then they did a five year projection. So both the year the hotel opens and five years later, um, they're expecting no impact on levels of service at any of the study intersections. Um, they also examined traffic safety, uh, including sight distances from the driveway. Um, so they we had taken a look at that. They took another look at it. Um, they are recommending removing um, one or two trees to the uh, east of the project uphill to just improve the uphill sight distances. Um, but other than that, I uh, found that the project didn't have an impact on traffic safety. Um, next criterion under conditional use is uh, no undue effect on bylaws and ordinances, which will be addressed generally as we go through and address the other criteria. Um, Affecting utilization of renewable energy resources. Um, the project, again, is, is centered in the parcel, so it's not uh, particularly near any other um, um, properties that may uh, utilize renewable resources. Um, and to the north of the property, where you typically have a southern uh, exposure to the sun for solar, there's nothing between us and the road, so we don't anticipate any reduction in access to renewable energy. Um, and then not generating excessive dust noise, odor, glare, vibration, radiation, or other nuisance. Um, we don't expect that this is going to have any um, particularly undue uh, effects under any of those. Um, the hotel is, uh, generally everything happens inside. Um, even the restaurant, most of the things happen inside. And the biggest uh, kitchen is to the north east end of the restaurant is the kitchen area, so it's located as far away from the decent restaurant uh, residences as possible. So, um, does the board have any questions on the conditional use criteria? So, can you really look down now a little bit because it's too high? Too, too well, loud? It's too high. We're not hearing. Yeah, as you read, you are uh, uh, down. It's better to come up from below a little bit. Thank than, you. Great. Any questions from the board on the site plan? Uh, conditional use, sorry. No. Let's go on to site plan then. Okay. Um, so there's a few things in that beginning of site plan that I think I already addressed in conditional use, uh, including compliance with regulations and uh, natural features. Uh, so we'll move on to access. 
Um, as I stated before, access to the project will from a new curb cut off of Route 66. Um, we are proposing a second curb cut on the site um, for two reasons. One is um, the site distances at this, this location are the, the best of anywhere along the front edge, so for a safety reason. And uh, the other reason we're not proposing to use the existing access off the site is to minimize impact to the neighbors. So um, you know, this property does have rights to use Oak Ridge Lane, but we didn't want to go that direction. Um, we wanted to reserve Oak Ridge Lane for access to the residential properties. And again, the site distances from down there are uh, significantly worse than they are uh, at the proposed access. Um, so uh, as, I, as I stated before, the site distances are, are generally adequate uh, from the proposed location. Um, it's at the minimum of, of the intersection site distance uh, to the east. Um, so we're hoping to trim uh, a few of the trees back there. We do need to just um, clear that with the state wetlands divisions because the uh, buffer for the wetland goes onto Route 66 uh, to the east of the project. So anything we did over there, we just need to make sure uh, obtain a wetland permit if we needed it, or at least run it by the, the state wetland folks. Um, uh, the curb cuts designed to meet uh, VTrans uh, commercial access standards, uh, including both the horizontal and vertical dimensional standards. Uh, we have received our letter of intent from VTrans, so they've had a chance to review the uh, design of the driveway and, and find it acceptable. Uh, on-site circulation. Uh, on-site circulation is provided by a series of, of drives and parking aisles. Um, so the main circulation is through the driveway, uh, then there's a sort of a main circulation aisle between the parking lot and the hotel. Um, as I stated previously, the drive around the hotel is, um, this, this furthest out drive here is actually designed for access by a tractor trailer, so there should be plenty of sufficient access for emergency vehicles and fire trucks. Um, all of the access aisles are 24 feet in width and designed for two-way circulation. Um, there's also access to three sides of the restaurant um, in, in the event of emergency services needing to access that area. Um, the parking lot uh, behind the restaurant is also designed for access for a 30-foot box truck, which is what we expect will be the majority of the deliveries to the restaurant, so they can pull up to the dumpster location here and then back down into this loading space for deliveries to the restaurant, drive out forward. Um, there are no existing um, pedestrian facilities on Route 66, um, as well as no commercial developments or adjacent parcels on the south side of the road. So we are not proposing any pedestrian or vehicular interconnection with adjacent properties. Uh, parking, loading, and service areas. Uh, again, uh, the parking areas uh, are three sides of the hotel and behind the restaurant. Uh, all the parking spaces are designed for regulations, uh, nine foot by 18 foot spaces and 24 foot aisles. Um, the entire parking area is proposed to be paved uh, and it will be graded to drain storm water, as I stated before, to an uh, underground collection system. Um, we are proposing a reduction to the um, required number of parking spaces based on shared uses uh, between the three, um, the three facilities on the site. Um, so I had submitted with the application a shared use parking analysis, um, which is based on uh, a reduction in parking based on peak usage over the time of day. Um, so, it, uh, if certain, you know, during the day you would expect, um, you know, a certain amount of time versus a certain amount of utilization of the parking based on the use um, versus in the evening or on the weekend. Um, so the way the analysis works is you uh, apply these percentages, which uh, we took from the City of Montpelier zoning regulations, um, and then um, uh, apply the percentages to different time periods. And then whatever is the peak parking demand time period is the amount of parking that we propose to uh, <coughs> site. Uh, so based on that analysis, um, the, the straight uh, calculation of parking spaces from the zoning regulations uh, is 294 spaces. 
Uh, we're proposing 238 spaces, which is a 20% reduction in spaces um, based on the shared use parking analysis. Um, and, and also just to minimize site disturbance, minimize the amount of parking spaces that people have to look at uh, when they enter the site, and, uh, minimize impacts to natural resources. There's a, a number of reasons why we're requesting the parking reduction. Next site plan criteria is landscaping and screening. Um, this is the project landscaping plan. Um, the landscaping is designed uh, for the requirements uh, of the entertainment <coughs> district to uh, integrate the site into the um, agrarian, mixed agrarian character of the uh, general area. Um, so there's a minimal amount of um, grass lawn. Um, most, this sort of squiggly line here around the edge is uh, intended to show the edge of uh, meadow areas. Um, there are some uh, split rail fencing along and crab apple trees along the entrance uh, to sort of guide people into the site. Uh, there are some larger trees proposed around the border of the site um, to, to separate the site from the surrounding area. Um, and then the remainder of the trees are uh, there to break up the parking area, provide shade trees. So there's, you can see there's some significant shade trees in the parking area, especially in this 15-foot uh, wide landscaped area between the two uh, parking areas to the north of the hotel, uh, as well as in some of these areas here. Um, and then we are also providing landscaping on the east side of the site. Um, one of the comments we did get from the design the advisory committee um, was that this wall of the restaurant um, is a, a large wall with not a lot of door and window openings. Um, they requested some additional screening uh, because there was a view of the back of the restaurant as you're coming down Route 66 uh, from the east. Um, so there's these three large maple trees that are intended to sort of break up the back of that facade. Um, as well as a couple of spruce trees a little farther away um, that will work in concert with the existing um, wooded area to remain uh, to the north um, and provide additional screening. Um, the, those landscaping has been added to the view study so we can take a closer look at what that's going to look like um, when we get into that section. So just to clarify, that is not in our uh, packet of applications on the landscaping Right, so the, plan. The, the, addition, the addition of landscaping is this red, yep. red, Got uh, it. red maple here okay. on the back of the uh, restaurant. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, actually, as long as we're on landscaping, can I ask, because uh, by the way, we did a site visit. Some of you may have joined us out there. Nothing that we said or did on the site visit counts. Thank you. Hello. So uh, we had conducted a site visit earlier at 5.30 tonight um, at the site. Nothing we said or did there counts as part of the record unless and until it's repeated here or addressed here. So I just, for those of you who are there, if you had thoughts and shared them, you need to share them again as part of this. But one of the questions I had while out there, there are two beautiful cherry trees off the back toward uh, the area, and I got mixed review as to whether those were staying or going. Um, could you explain that? Behind the tent area? Yeah, behind the tent area. Yeah. So, those are... So I think these are, these are the trees in question here. So there's yep. uh, five of them that are proposed to be removed along the back here. Uh, and they do include some of the larger existing trees that are there. Uh, okay. And it was in the area that's going to be graded to, to create the tent and event site, so um, they wouldn't survive the grading, so we we're proposing to remove them. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the next criteria is grading and drainage. Uh, so in general, this site is graded to follow the existing slope of the site from the southeast over here to the northwest over there. Um, 
there will be some um, flattening of the site uh, in order to accommodate the building pad, uh, but we're generally maintaining the existing drainage pattern. Um, as I said, all the parking lot drainage is collected in closed piping and conveyed uh, to the stormwater pond. We're open treated to the requirements of the uh, Vermont Stormwater Management Manual. Um, outdoor storage and outdoor facilities. Uh, we're not proposing any outdoor storage or display of goods, supplies, vehicles, equipment, machinery, or other materials other than things that are typically associated with commercial developments um, like dumpsters, um, HVAC equipment, um, parking areas, site lighting, that kind of stuff. Um, the, dump, the dumpsters are, there's two of them. Uh, one of them is located here at the uh, south end of the, the drive between the hotel and the restaurant, uh, which is generally going to be for the hotel use. And then one is located in the northeast corner of the site here, uh, which is generally going to be for the restaurant use. Um, and both of those dumpsters will be provided with screening fences, um, as well as uh, exterior HVAC equipment and things like that. Uh, the next criteria is the site lighting. Um, so this is our project photo method plan. Um, generally, the site lighting is designed to provide um, safety and security for the site without overly lighting things. Um, so the site lighting has been designed to um, comply with the Vermont Outdoor Lighting Requirements and IES NA recommendations. Um, including average and minimum light levels and um, max, average min and min max ratios. Um, in general, the parking lot light areas are lighted to between one and one and a half foot candles on average. Um, I don't know how easy it is to see, uh, but this magenta line here is a, a one foot candle uh, ISO contour. Um, so you can see, you know, in, in the areas directly below the lights, it's a little higher, um, but in general, the parking lot is between one and two foot candles. Um, the area of Port Crochet is going to be lit uh, a little more brightly in the neighborhood of five foot candles, and they will be, um, you know, lighting at the door entrances and uh, those kinds of areas. Um, there is a flagpole located right here. Uh, that we were planning to light the flag on the flagpole, but it's going to go on the top and shine down onto the flag um, rather than being lit from the bottom. Brian, can you, can you talk about how the lighting will look from off site? What sort of lighting you're. Oh, sure. Uh, all the lighting fixtures are fully cut off and downcast. Uh, generally, they're LED uh, lights. So um, there should be no glare impact off-site. Um, there was a little bit of concern at the DRAC meeting about these two lights and impact on the residents that's down the hill from there. So we'll be providing house-side shields um, on, on the lights on that end there. Um, but otherwise, um, you know, from off-site, on the areas where you can see the site, you will see that the parking lot is lit but uh, you shouldn't have any direct views of lighting fixtures. Uh, there shouldn't be any glare. Um, the, the lighting levels and the luminaires that are selected should prevent any significant sky glow from the, from the development. So um, because the development has limited visibility from off site, also the lighting will have limited visibility from off site. So um, it, it shouldn't be a uh, adverse impact on the surrounding area. Can you also, as long as we're on questions, I guess, on this, what's the difference between um, like uh, nighttime business hours and nighttime overnight for you guys, for lighting? I don't think you're, at, you're asking if we're going to reduce the lighting uh, after like it late in the night. Yeah, thank you for rephrasing that question. Sure. Yeah. I just want to make sure I understand the question. Yeah, that um, we haven't made a specific proposal to reduce the lighting, lighting uh, after hours. Uh, because it's a hotel, people are going to be accessing it uh, at all hours mm -hmm. of the night. Um, you know, and again, because of the limited visibility uh, from off-site, you know, it, it may or may not be appropriate to have 
additional dimming after hours. Okay, thank you. So that is the end of the state planning criteria. Uh, next on my list is the specific uh, district specific standards for the any change district. Pardon me. Uh, starting with the dimensional standards specific to the any change district. Um, Generally, the project's designed to meet the dimensional standards of the Inland Change District as is noted in the table at the front end of the letter. Um, as I stated at the beginning, we are requesting a waiver to the uh, height limit in the district. So the general height limit in the Inland Change Southeast District is 35 feet. Um, we are requesting a waiver uh, for a building height of 49 feet 6 inches, uh, which is below the maximum height allowable with a waiver. Um, for of uh, 50 feet. Um, and so there's a few criteria to go along with the requesting of the height waiver. Um, one is the, the scenic sensitivity requirement. And so um, as part of addressing the scenic sensitivity requirement, we had Union for prepare this uh, view study uh, the methodology of the view study was um, similarly to any members of the site visit um, floated, excuse me, a uh, balloon above the entrance to the hotel. Uh, in this case, we actually uh, had one balloon at 50 feet, which is just above the proposed height of the hotel, um, one at 75 feet, and one at 100 feet, um, just to illustrate uh, the visibility even at higher heights than we are proposing. Um, so this is a general map of, of where uh, they took photographs of when the balloons were floated. Um, and of, of all of these locations, the only place, places where they were visible were um, off of Route 66 to the east of the project and from the Morgan Orchards development. Um, so uh, generally, the project complies very well with the visibility standards. It's not visible at all from Air 89. Um, and has only limited visibility uh, from Route 66. So this is the view from the Morgan Richards parking lot. Um, you can see in this blow up, this yellow balloon is at the 50 foot height, the blue balloon is the 75 foot height, the red balloon is the 100 foot height. Um, so based on the location of these in the picture, um, this is a rendering of the development uh, as it would appear uh, from the uh, Morgan Orchards. Um, you can see that the at 50 feet, which is this this portion of the roof plate of the hotel, um, the hotel is below the existing tree line, um, so it won't, from this vantage point, block any view that isn't of the spot where the hotel is. Um, so you can see it, but you can also it doesn't block any view of anything beyond it. Um, and you can get a sense, um, you know, from this view. Um, all of the light poles are lower than the ridge line of this building. Uh, so even from the places where the site is visible, um, I'm sure you will see that the parking lot is lit, but you won't really see any of the light fixtures. Um, this is that's, that's, I'm sorry, as long as we're on that, um, back again. You do have lighting behind the restaurant, right? On your oh, that's lighting true. thing? Yes, you're right. There's yeah. lighting behind the restaurant. Okay, so uh, that would be clearly... We also added more trees. <laughs> yeah. them, Sorry, right? hang on, Paul, because I didn't swear you. Oh, I did swear I you in. Swear That's right. Yeah. That was Paul Ray. Sorry, do, what did you want to say then? Uh, we did add Sorry. trees into the back of that building. Right, okay, so trees. that'll kind right. of thank you. And, and again, you know, this view is going to be from above right. the lighting fixtures as well, so because they're downcast, you know, again, when you, can see the, when you can see the development, you can see that there are lights there, but you're not going to see any of the actual LEDs themselves. Right. Um, this is a, this, the same view from uh, Route 66 to the north of the project, so the, uh, sorry, east of the project, uphill. Um, this is the Class 2 wetland, uh, and here are the same three balloons. Uh, and, so, and these pictures were taken in um, April, I think, before, obviously, before leaf out. Uh, so, you know, uh, you, you can see today at the site, this there's significantly more foliage uh, in the summertime. Uh, but this is the, the view from Route 66 um, from this 
a fairly limited vantage point as you're driving by the wetland. Um, and then you can see right here, these right here are the three spruce trees that are proposed to screen and break up the view that the track was concerned about. Um, and then also behind them, you can see here, there, and you can almost see it there, the three large uh, maple trees that will be behind there. So, um, you know, we feel that that provides an adequate amount of breaking up of the view and screening of the view of, of the back of the hotel. Um, and again, this is going to be the time of year where it's most visible when these pictures are taken, and, and in the summertime, you'll see lots of it. Uh, and again, even from this vantage point, um, you can see the hotel, uh, even though you're a lot lower, the hotel is pretty much at the elevation of the existing tree line back here, and you still maintain the views uh, to the mountains in the distance. And then these are the other views um, from various points where the hotel is not visible. Um, so this is I-89 near the exit ramp, looking back up towards the hotel. Uh, this is the view from the parking ride. Um, and you can see that there's a significant amount of uh, conifers in this area that effectively screen the project from view. Uh, this is the southbound uh, lane of Interstate 89. Uh, and this is to the south of the interchange, uh, looking north towards the project. And then this is uh, a little bit higher up Route 66. Um, and this illustrates that, you know, you don't even see the view of the project from Route 66 until you've passed the drive. So this is from the driveway to the uh, Morgan Orchards, uh, to the east of that. Um, so the, the view of the site that you do have from Route 66 doesn't start until after you pass yeah. the Morgan Orchards driveway. And just for clarification, in, in all these renderings, you have put the hotel and conference center restaurants Excuse me. in the drawing um, So somewhere. these ones, these ones um, are ones where the picture was taken to illustrate the fact that you couldn't see the balloons. Okay, fine. So without the balloons, we can't, we can't put the can't drawing put the thing there. into the right. rendering, but so. But where the, where the balloons were showing, you have, rent, you have shown, that's the that's rendering right. there. From the two areas where the balloons are visible, that's where we've put the, put the renderings yep. of the building in. Um, so. That is one portion of the um, waiver criteria. Um, another portion of the waiver criteria um, is that. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Go back to the slide of the concrete on the parking right area. Parking right? Yep. So those trees right there will be maintained. Are those owned by the So some of them are on our property, on the, the applicant's property. Um, and the ones that aren't on the applicant's property are in the Interstate 89 right of way. Uh, so there's minimal chance that AOT would go through and cut them down. Sure. We own about five acres on the west side of that little log cabin that we saw, and that's those trees there. This might be illustrative. So the, the, this is the, uh, here's the park and ride. This is the applicant's property. So you can see that the bulk of those conifers are on the applicant's property, and then there is some amount of them that are in the Interstate 89 right of way. Um, but I mean, unless unless these are impinging on the function of the highway, I can't imagine the AMT coming through and cutting them down. But even if they did, there would still be a significant buffer on on the property. So uh, the other section of uh, or one of the other sections of the height waiver uh, is that the building height is necessary to accommodate a specific process that can't otherwise be accommodated in a building designed to meet the 35 foot height standard. Um, so I addressed that a bit in the letter, but I'd like to kind of go through that point by point. Um, this project, the project that is proposed, is uh, a Hampton Inn, so it's a national brand hotel. Um, it's not an independent hotel. Uh, and with uh, being a national brand hotel, there are um, requirements uh, in order to get the franchise that, that have to be met. Um, if you don't meet the brand requirements when you're building a hotel, uh, then you don't get a franchise agreement, and therefore we can't build the project that we were proposing. One of the requirements uh, in order to get the franchise agreement uh, is that the applicant conduct a market study uh, to determine the number of rooms uh, that should be in the hotel. 
Uh, and the results of the market study that was done for this hotel showed that an 80-unit hotel was what was economically feasible. Uh, we're proposing 79 units um, to spur some building. It was awkward to add the 80th unit into the layout of the building, so we cut down to 79. Um, so because the, so the, as part of the franchise agreement, the, the uh, applicants have agreed to build a 79-unit hotel. If they don't build a 79 unit hotel, then the project doesn't go forward. Um, so the number of units in the hotel is a specific requirement of this specific project, and the project would not go forward if that number of units wasn't met. Um, so we've, that's the majority of the reason why we're requesting the height waiver is to accommodate a 79 unit hotel. Um, we looked at a three-story hotel because we could fit it within the 50-foot, um, you know, additional height with the waiver. Um, and a, a two-story hotel, uh, if it had the proposed roof line, uh, and I'll just switch to that. So this is an elevation of the hotel building. Um, there's a variation in the roof line. Um, so at, this is the point in the roof line at which it's 49 and a half feet. It's a, around 10 feet lower down at the ends. So this variation in roof line um, was designed into the project uh, to meet the uh, building design standards of the district. Uh, so even if we were to build a two-story hotel with a very roof line um, that meets the um, design standards of the district, it would still require a height waiver, uh, and it would take up um, quite a lot more space because um, about two-thirds of the first floor isn't hotel units. So um, in order to change from three stories to two, you're adding um, more, you're adding a lot more room on the end than, than just a third more of the building uh, because of the large area on the first floor that's dedicated to lobby and breakfast area and things like that. So you said that the two-story <coughs> version um, do you know the numbers that that would change for the percent coverage and building coverage? I don't, because we haven't done a full design at yeah, two okay. stories. Yep. Um, but but we're asking for a three-story. No, I understand. I, we, 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 I know. We are charged with one of the issues is, is clearly a height waiver, mm -hmm. right? So then the question is, what are the alternatives if they're, and we're trying to, I need, we need the information on the record. To, right. to so so even a two-story building yep. with a compliant roof line would be over 35 feet. Okay. So the option for creating a, ho a, a hotel with 79 units with a compliant roof line is a one-story building, and that's just too large to be feasible on the site. It takes up too much area, and it's really infeasible. And I don't think that the, the brand would approve a one-story hotel anyway. Um, it's doubtful that they would approve a two-story hotel. Um, so um, the specific requirement of this project is that to build this project that we we're proposing, it has to be a 79 or 80 unit hotel. And it's not feasible to build a 79 or 80 unit hotel that has a roof line that complies with the architectural standards of the district um, and has the required number of rooms. Mm -hmm. So that's your what you're saying for the requirement in the regulations, the specific process? That's right. Okay. But there's nothing else, no elevator, HVAC system that would be a specific process that would require the 50-foot height? Well, I mean, as you make the building small, you reduce the requirements for an elevator. You know, in a three-story building, you need an elevator. In a two-story building, you may not need an elevator. But um, no, there's not, you know, any, this, this is the reason why it has to be a three-story building. Mm -hmm. So, so everyone knows, the requirement is that um, one of, one, uh, 3A2 of the section is that the additional building height is necessary to accommodate a specific process that cannot otherwise be accommodated in a building designed in accordance with the maximum height standards. 
process is not defined, it's one of the things we have to consider. What is meant by a specific process? Um, and we will, we will have to address that. And that's what Dan was getting at. So, go ahead. Um, is it okay to Paul? Yeah. I yep. do want to mention to everybody that we did do a preliminary meeting with the DRB. Yes. And we showed different roof lines. We showed a four-story building with a flat roof. Right. We also showed a building with a peaked roof. Yep. And that's what we're providing. So we took our call from what the consensus was of the board. So we wanted to put a peak on it. Yep. So that it would fit within the character of Randolph Center than a flat roof. I think all of that is relevant information. It's important for and people to know, and that's what I was trying to get at. I think at we have the, pictures that show. I think we should. Them. I think we should. If you have them, you should show them so that people understand. That's part of the decision making that's going the, on here. The renderings that were from the preliminary hearing. Uh, Paul is raising those as relevant. If you have them and you want to raise them, you can, yeah. And then what our building looks like now. Right. I think you'll find it's a little more attractive. This will just take a second. Um, any questions from the board? Uh, uh, this, this concludes, Brian, your... Uh, Description, or did you have no, other? I have more criteria. Okay, yes. why don't you quickly go through those? I do want to get to public soon, so um, but go ahead and, and why don't you do those and pull up those maps at the same time so I can see how you <laughs> how you can do the left hand and right hand. I'm teasing. If you would, if you would prefer, I mean, you can show those profiles at any point. Um, sure. Would you? I can, I can do two things at once. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm teasing. You can do one at a time. I didn't know which one you wanted to do first. Okay, I've got this up, so let's do Okay, that. we'll do that first. Yep. Ah, there we go. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So this is the... Um, brand standard design for Hampton Inn in 2019, and this is the original proposal that we presented to the DRB at the preliminary hearing. Uh, so uh, the, the standard design for Hampton Inn is a four-story hotel. As you can see, it's uh, far more modern and has a flat roof um, and has a very specific color scheme. Um, so this, all of this that you see in this picture here would be part of what the standard Hampton Inn design would be. So it's uh, nail panels on the outside in gray and white. Uh, it's got the recessed windows. It's got the vertical blue element uh, as well as the blue elements on either side of the Hampton Inn. So um, when we presented this at the preliminary DRB hearing, um, the feedback both from the DRB and from the members of the public that were attending was that uh, the strong preference was to have a building design that fit much more into the vernacular architecture of Vermont, as well as matching much better with the other existing development in the area. So this was the starting point for the discussion. Uh, and I will also put up quickly the renderings of what we're proposing. Anyone here from Texas that can check the input signal for us? It's, it's all on the hard disk, believe it or not. Yeah, okay. <laughs> So that's the current proposal. Uh, and all of, all of the things that you're looking at in the current proposal were things that we had to go to the, the national grant and get specifically approved for this project because it is um, you know, a variation from their standard design. So the roof lining, the materials. Uh, so we'll get into this when we do the design standards, but um, the material 
along the bottom here is going to be a stone veneer, um, and then there's going to be two levels of a composite wood product, which will look like vertical siding um, to sort of break up the height of the building, um, the variation in roof lines, and then we have these stone in the center section. Um, so all of that were design changes that coming out of the original meeting we were specifically requesting in order to help the project um, fit into Vermont better, really, and, and fit into Randolph better. Um, so that's the sort of journey we were on before mm -hmm. we got here. We really okay, tried to listen to the concerns that we heard at the primary meeting, yep. and that's how we got to this product. Very good. Thank you. you want to finish the criteria, then we'll move on to Great. questions from the board? Yes. Great. Thank you. Um, there are some supplemental use standards, but hotel or conference facilities is allowed use in the interchange southeast district, and restaurant is allowed as an accessory use to the hotel. No drive-through or exterior to walk off windows are proposed. Um, then there's a, a list of supplemental site plan standards for the district. Um, hazardous materials, no hazardous materials other than your standard uh, cleaning fluids and such that you might use in a hotel or a restaurant. Um, the open space criteria, um, while the project is um, proposed to be built uh, in an open field in the center of the site, um, the open space criteria specifically um, protect open fields that are visible from Route 66. Um, and so you can see because of the existing tree line along here, and for those of you that are at the site visit, um, the site does not appear to be an open field from Route 66. The fields don't open up until you get up in this area to the north, uh, east of the site um, where the field starts to open up into the, the more of an orchards area. Um, and again, the proposed development is located uh, towards the center of the property, and so we're trying to preserve connections to the open space goes to the west uh, with the trees that are helping uh, block the visibility of the hotel and um, to the open space to the east as well. Um, scenic sensitivity, I think we covered the visibility of the site from, from the various protected viewpoints on Route 66 and North State 89. Um, I think we've covered topography and grading. Uh, clustering is the next. Oh, topography and grading? Yep. With the elevation of sea levels and base the hotel or any other? Uh, 1,191 feet at the hotel. Um, so again, the project is designed to be to cluster it as much as possible uh, while still providing um, the adequate space for the building and required parking at the center of the property. Um, it's uh, design, uh, the buildings are designed to relate to each other, both in the architectural design and in the layout of the site. Um, so that's why we're proposing this kind of L shape here. Um, you know, we expect most of the pedestrian traffic between the two sites to be centered on this portion of the site. Um, so you see there's several crosswalks, uh, pedestrian walkways. Um, there's also going to be sort of formal landscape area, area here to the south of the restaurant. Um, that's sort of part of the pedestrian uh, connections between the two buildings. Uh, I think we reviewed landscaping as well as access and circulation. Um, the parking. Um, so one of the, the um, parking criteria of the particular district is uh, to try and avoid large expanses of parking. So in order to try and meet that, uh, we both separating the parking area around the site as much as possible um, so that 57% of the total parking is to the north of the hotel in this center area and then 43% is in these sort of auxiliary lots to the west and behind the hotel and behind the restaurant area. Um, we've also provided this uh, large landscape island in the main parking area um, to, to about divide the, few, the two large sections of parking and um, you know, to try and separate the sort of pedestrian-oriented area of the site down here from the more parking area-oriented area of the site. So, um, as we discussed, this, this will be a minimum of 15 feet wide and have large shade trees and, and quite a bit of formal landscaping in it to break up that parking area. Um, after the lighting we discussed, um, all proposed project utilities will be underground, um, which brings us to 
the building design standards, um, which I'm going to hand over to Steve from Green and Land here to discuss. Thank you, my name is Steve Roy, we and Lamphere Architects. Uh, we are the architects working on the project. Um, as Paul mentioned, uh, and, and Brian, we started with a prototype hotel. We've customized it to fit the standards uh, and fit the desires of preliminary uh, hearing that uh, we were hearing. Um, looking at the building, its primary design is to uh, use materials that are uh, of the area, so there's stone and uh, kind of residential grade siding products, um, asphalt shingle roofing, uh, things that things that are compatible with the area that look and feel familiar to folks in the area. Uh, the massing is uh, meant to be compatible between the two uses. Uh, so with uh, the hotel uh, as the main view here, uh, what we've done is to break up the roof mass in several locations. So as, as the building gets a little bit wider towards the entrance, we've raised uh, the roof profile slightly. Adds visual interest. Uh, the, the peak of the hotel at the front kind of signifies that it's uh, a main point of entrance. Uh, and it has some, you know, special, the stone veneer has some special uh, attention to it. Um, the, the colors that we've chosen are meant to be earth tone colors, ones that uh, help to blend the project into the natural scenery. Uh, that will help uh, both to reduce the visibility from any access points, uh, but just to also feel like it's of the area. Uh, we have several views that I'll flip through uh, just to take different vantage points uh, throughout. This one is looking from the north side of the hotel towards the entrance. We do have some landscaping that will happen in the parking island, which is that, that's what that is showing. Uh, looping around to the Porto Cochere from the west side of the hotel as if you had driven uh, through the parking lot. This would be a visitor's uh, perspective as they drive up to the Porto Cochere. Uh, as you can see, the, uh, it is not uh, dominant in height. It is really kind of a residential uh, scale building. Uh, you can see in the background uh, the conference center, which is this area here. Uh, there's a, a entrance portion to that building, and then the restaurant is the gabled section. So we've tried to put a gable on the restaurant as well as the hotel. Those are kind of the signifying and unifying uh, elements uh, between the two buildings. One of the criteria for the area. Uh, this is, would be a view from uh, a porch seating area for the restaurant. So if you're having a meal, you could be, um, you know, outdoors on a night like uh, like night like tonight. Uh, in the distance, you may have a little bit of a, a mountain view um, from that level. And I think that might be the last of those views. Uh, I think really the effort has been to uh, make it feel residential, uh, reasonably scaled with adjacent buildings uh, and, and other buildings in the area. Any questions about the exterior? Not that I have. Any Anyone have questions about the exterior? No. Thank you. Good. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. Brian, you back up. I think, uh, I'm not sure that we've shown a good view of the restaurant design, but just so everyone can see it, there's a the bird's eye view of the restaurant design. <laughs> it's got a similar stone veneer on the end where uh, you'll enter into the site, and then a similar uh, wood siding, a composite wood siding project uh, on the area near the hotel. So as Steve was saying, some, some gables in this area, in this area, and so between the materials, the massing, and the uh, gables, that's how we're drawing the two buildings on the mm -hmm. side together. So just to clarify, the, rep the restaurant's on the left side uh, as we look at it, the conference center is on the right side. That's so right, yep. So this yep. mass is the restaurant. <coughs> yep. This is the sort of entry and lobby here, yep. and that mass is the uh, conference center. 
the center. Okay, thank you. Paul, did you want to say something? Yeah. We had one more view from Route 66 looking. Uh, yeah, we did. That I think will give people a good perspective. This is 66, right? There, yep. Entrance There's a rendering of what yep. the site will look like at, from the entrance on, on Route 66. Okay. Thank you. Anything else, friends? I think that concludes our presentation. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you all for your patience out there. Um, questions from the board? Uh, yeah, I want to ask about the off the, the lighting again. It comes up a lot. We have an example further up the hill of lighting that's really visible to people passing by because you're looking up at the lighting. And you've rightly pointed out, Ryan, that. Um, Almost every vantage point you're looking down, so um, uh, you'll know the parking lot somewhat illuminated, but you're not going to see the glare of the light, and that makes good sense to me. I'm wondering from this particular vantage point, um, what, what um, might we see and what have you done to mitigate it, if anything needs to be mitigated? So there are a couple of lights um, along, along the parking uh, lane, uh, but then once you get up into the main, I'm sorry, the entrance drive. Mm -hmm. uh, but once you get up into the main portion of the parking lot, uh, all the fixtures are facing the street site and they're you know, going away from the track. So um, you know you may you may look up and you may see uh, these two lights on the entrance drive, but um, that's no different than driving down the street and going under a street light or, or some such like that. So um, nothing's gonna be pointed out at Route 66. It's it's all gonna be you know, just um, optics of the of the things around the outside are going to be throwing light into the site, and then everything's going to be downcast. So um, I don't expect it to be a significant clear issue. And as you're going down Route 66, you would have to be looking this way out your window to really see them. Um, which mm -hmm. I would argue isn't the best way to look when you're driving that section of Route 66. <laughs> <laughs> Probably should be looking forward. Yeah. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Um, kind of as long as we're on lighting, I'm sorry, and we, we talked about um, whether there was a difference between uh, business hours or late night in terms of change of the lighting, but can you describe, um, and this gets into traffic, but I want to address it in terms of lighting, the back of the hotel, and is that the loading area for the back, in the back of the area of the hotel, and what's, when, do the deliveries and things like that occur relative to the kind of standard business operating hours? Uh, so the loading area for the hotel, the, the breakfast area and kitchen are in this portion of the hotel. Mm -hmm. So the loading is going to occur along this drive aisle right here. Um, so, uh, and I, I'm not sure what time the deliveries happen. I don't know if that's something that's been worked out yet, but, um, you know, certainly- I was looking at the traffic. I was looking at the traffic. I'm sorry. I, I inter I'm sorry. I'm hearing. Yeah, that. we're all interrupting. Hey, go, go ahead. Ed, why don't we let? Uh, I just said deliveries for the breakfast there we happen after the breakfast times. Okay. So ten o'clock until. Yeah. So is it fair to say that that's coincident with the other kind of general day traffic that might be coming and going from from the business? I'm trying to get a sense of like. Whether, and I, I saw the traffic study, uh, you know, the analysis of the number of vehicles and things like that, so I, I understand that. What I don't understand necessarily is the coincidental timing and how traffic circulates through, um, through the site and whether um, there's any interference between deliveries of the, you know, 55-foot tractor-trailer trucks or the box trucks and people going to the conference center or people using the, re the sure. uh, restaurant? So generally those deliveries happening in the late morning to middle of the day are a very slow time for the hotel, for sure. Um, people tend to leave the hotel in the morning and show up at the hotel in the evening, and so the middle of the day, it's, the hotel demands are very low. Um, so we wouldn't expect there to be very much traffic at all accessing the drive around the back of the hotel at those hours. Um, the deliveries to the restaurant are all going to be um, in behind it uh, in the employee parking area. Um, and they're not going to be receiving deliveries in the middle of the dinner time rush. 
Um, they might do, they might do the delivery during the day during a conference, but the conference attendees are going to be parking out in the northerly parking lot and accessing the buildings in the front. So any deliveries that come into the restaurant will come in turn uh, and then back up behind the restaurant. And the only conflicts will be between any employees that might be at the restaurant who aren't likely to be leaving when they receive a delivery and uh, the delivery trucks. <coughs> And kind of continuing on the lighting uh, concept here, um, we, we do have some residences in the area. This is not a residential district, but you're adjacent to a residential district. So um, the criteria for lighting is whenever practicable or if lighting's in a sensitive or residential neighborhood um, to, to have lighting that includes timers, dim dimmers, sensors, et cetera, to, to eliminate unneeded lighting. And so, with respect to the residences that you know are adjacent, both on the west side and the south side particularly, can you describe how the lighting would affect those residences? Sure. Um, so to the residents to the south, um, there's a significant different distance from the back of the parking lot to their house, and also a significant increase in elevation between the hotel level and, and the house. So, from the back of the parking area to the residence to the south is 356 feet, uh, and that includes 150 feet of wooded area in between the two um, houses, uh, as well as the ground level at the, the house uh, to the south is approximately 40 feet higher than the ground level of the hotel. Um, so I wouldn't expect any significant impacts from lighting to someone who's above and not far away. Um, so for the residents on the west, um, they are below the lighting, um, so we are going to be installing house side shields on those lights. And I think, you know, out in that area, those would certainly be candidates to be dimmed or, you know, put on um, motion sensors at night. Um, I would imagine that um, the applicants would probably be willing to put uh, most of the sort of outer lighting, um, at least on dimmers at night, if not uh, Really off the floor sensors. The ones closer to the hotel are probably going to need to stay on for uh, security purposes. Very good. Thank you. Uh, John, I'm, I'm going to keep asking questions until somebody takes this other microphone and interrupts me. Is that okay? So, so now I'm going to switch to um, the traffic circulation a little bit. Um, Can I just finish up on the lighting? Oh, yeah, sure. We did go in front of the drive committee. And they were comfortable with our lighting. Yeah, yeah. They, we they saw that. It, so we have been in front of us. Yep, we saw we that. We have been in front of a town board. They gave you a recommendation. Okay, relax a little bit. We are uh, lighting. Lighting is under our conditional use standards. It's under our site plan review criteria, and the DRAC is advisory to us. So, thank you, though. I pre I understand. So, circulation from the. Um, Looking at the, the areas that you have for trailers and, and buses, so are those uh, standard standard size and, and location for being able to back out? I, I, I'm, I'm saying this as someone who needs about 16 tries to back up a trailer on, on, my, on my truck, so don't go by me, but coming into these obviously they have to back out into this to get to get out again right so they're designed for a pickup truck with a trailer yeah that's okay. what they're designed for um because what we the people we expect to be using them are uh, people who want to bring their snowmobiles stay at the hotel yep. snowmobile around the bass trails um so they we did run um a um, turning movement analysis and they are adequate for someone with like a tundra full-size pickup mm -hmm. truck and I think it was like a 20 foot trailer um, can get back out of those spaces. Great. Um, yeah. You know, and so that's why the, you can see that the aisle width is increased from this yes. to there. Yeah. So it should be adequate for those. We're not planning to have like a semi parked there overnight. Right. Um, we don't expect actually that people in, that are driving semis are going to they're going to go to the parking ride and, and sleep in the truck. So. Yeah. So if, if a, would a bus be typically um, supported by the same lane lane shape? I haven't done a specific analysis yeah, for a bus. It strikes me that they probably would. You know, yeah. at worst, they may need some management from the hotel staff to yeah. shuffle people yeah. around. But and just you know, just to be clear, if it were me, I would have to 
go forward and drive over the grass and back out to a different room because I couldn't back out. Yeah, that's I mean, honestly, we considered that as a circulation, but yeah. we, we uh, abandoned it because of the additional impacts of impervious and, and uh, you know, all of that stuff. Yeah, so. glad you did. I'll, yeah. Um, uh, questions? Other questions from folks? No? Okay, I think we'll go to questions um, from, the, uh, from the public. When you, when you stand, would you please um, state your name? And we have a microphone here. I would really ask you to use it um, both so that we can record you, but also so that everybody else can hear. So, um, Mr. Deer. Uh, uh, Gary Deer, I'm newly appointed to the board of the Regional Planning Commission. What is the nature of your interaction uh, with the Planning Commission? And when you refer to this district standards, are you talking about the T. Rourke standards? Yeah, OK. So I think you're welcome to answer this if you wish. Um, I'm going to be pretty lenient on the, on the questions, unless we really are up against time. But we're really trying to focus on the standards that are applicable through our zoning regulations. So what happens at the Regional Planning Commission, not so, not so relevant, with the exception of our town plan, which had been approved by them. But um, so, so you're welcome to go forward, so, so it's our standards that they've been Yes, it's here. our standards okay, only thank that you. we're considering here. Thank you, Gary. Next uh, question. And again, we're on questions at the moment. If you do want to make a comment, I'm happy to. Uh, I'm happy to swear you in, but I'd like to. Re I'd like to get all the questions out first, so everybody can okay. hear the answers. Hi, my name is Cynthia Quilici, and um, this is sort of a the waterfall question in the sense that they're asking for a height uh, waiver based on uh, demands, market demands, based on a market survey that they had done, saying that 80 rooms would be. Uh, was you know the amount that would be absorbed easily. Um, was that before or after the other proposed Hampton Inn of Montpelier, which has not opened yet? That's another 84 rooms. That's 20 minutes away. It's actually 35, 40 minutes away. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how fast you get. <laughs> For me, it's 20, 25 minutes. <laughs> um, I don't know the answer to that. And uh, you, you kind of were looking at me, but I can't answer that well, question. Well, just so. you're chairing the yes. meeting, so. Yes, I am chairing the meeting. Okay. So can the applicant answer that, or does the applicant wish to answer sure. that? Sure. So there are both Hampton Inn, so I'm sure that the national brand is aware of both uh, developments. Uh, however, I'm not privy to the details of the market study. Um, what I do know is that the market study that was conducted for this project uh, had a recommendation of 80 rooms, and that is the basis for granting the franchise agreement to the applicants. I guess I guess my thing is that this board is going to have to grant that waiver or not grant it based on how credible that argument may or may not be. Great. Um, and that was a bit of a comment. So that's an example where that's okay. We'll let you get away with it. This, but seriously, let's um, let's keep it to questions, and then we can come back again to comments um, on that. So. Uh, let me go to this gentleman there, because I saw your hand. Oh. Well, whoever's got the mic, go. Go for it. There you Hi, go. Joan Sachs uh, from Randolph Center. Um, there have been three, maybe, maybe this is a comment, I don't know, but there are I'll let you know. three <laughs> projects in Randolph Center built in the last five years that are heavy users of water. Mm. And um, I'm worried about having another heavy user of water in the same area, whether or not they are tied to the Randolph Center water thing. Yeah, you're definitely in the comment range. Could you phrase that in a question of, like, could you explain the water usage and how it relates to the site plan criteria or the natural resources use? So, so should I wait and make a comment later then? Yeah, but I'm gonna pick I'm gonna pick up on what you were saying, Ms. Saxon. Say, um, could you could you discuss a little bit about the water, the amount that you need, how it relates to the discharges of the site, because that's within the purview of the board, as well as. Um, how it might affect the natural resources on the site, which are on the board. And maybe in the context of that, you can address some of the concerns that you're likely to hear about here. Sure, absolutely. So um, we are proposing that the, the development as a whole will be served by an on-site water system, which means we are planning to drill a well 
and install all the needed uh, infrastructure to treat and pressurize and distribute the water to the two buildings in the project. So as part of that uh, process, there's a permit process with the state um, where they uh, are reviewing both the source of the water and then the treatment and the distribution of the water. Uh, so we're currently working through the source permitting process uh, with the state. Um, we've had a site visit with them uh, and they're the state hydrogeologists. Um, they've reviewed our um, general plans for the development of the site and they've given us an approval to drill the well. Once the well is drilled, um, we then need to submit to the state a plan to um, test the well for both uh, quantity and interference with other uh, water sources uh, within a 2,000 foot radius. Um, which is a criteria developed by the state for the particular amount of demand that we are proposing for the hotel. Um, and also water quality, which really only goes to protecting the users of the water system. So um, the applicant has hired a professional hydrogeologist who will oversee the well drilling as well as the um, discharge and interference testing. Um, and that will uh, include um, monitoring all of the wells within a 2,000 foot radius that we get permission to monitor from the landowners um, to ensure that there is not uh, unacceptable interference or too much withdrawal of water from the aquifer. So in order to get our partner to develop the uh, water system, we're going to have to ensure that we are not excessively using the water from the local aquifer. Um, there are several wells in the immediate vicinity of the project that are drilled to 200 feet or so and produce over 50 gallons a minute, um, which is uh, an incredible amount of water uh, for a particularly a residential well. Um, our um, projected maximum day demand for both the hotel and the conference center is around 26 gallons a minute. So we, given the um, quantity of water that is typical for shallow, frankly, shallow bedrock wells in the area, we don't expect significant interference. But again, we will be um, conducting a very thorough um, test of the aquifer's capacity to ensure that we won't be creating interference with other people's water supplies. And does that include, um, if you're not interfering with other people's water supplies, is it fair to say you're also not interfering with the natural resources of the site, the, the streams and, and oh, wetlands sure. areas, yes, right? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. absolutely. Yep. All right. Thank you. Other, other questions? Yes. Go up here. Um, uh, Milo Cutler, Randolph Center. So, and I'm yeah, here. Milo Cutler, Randolph Center. So I'm going to quantify this a little bit because... Um, Wait, comment or question? It is a question. Okay. But just to preface it, um, you made the comment that you didn't see semi-truck traffic because you thought the, the truckers um, would stop at the parking area on 89. Is that correct? So hotel guests, not deliveries. R right. And that's... Um, just from my experience traveling the country, I think um, if you have a hotel at an exit on an interstate, you're going to get truckers. They need to take showers. They need to eat. You know what? I'm so my question is, if you get that semi-truck traffic coming into this hotel as guests, where are they parking? Um, are you looking at that with the traffic study? in terms of entering and exiting. So in terms of on-site circulation, uh, again, we're not really planning the site to accommodate tractor trailer drivers coming and parking at the site. So I think if that were uh, one of the hotel, it would be the kind of thing that they would have to call ahead and change. Um, given that there is low demand for the restaurant and conference center use overnight, I think you could accommodate the tractor trailer parked in one of the more remote parking lots across a number of spaces, but you just have to plan that they would leave early in the morning before the restaurant traffic showed up. Um, I think that's the only way it's really going to happen. Um, in terms of the access, um, the, this access to the site is completely designed for tractor trailer traffic because we expect tractor trailer deliveries. Um, so just because some of the cars are, some of the vehicles accessing the site are tractor trailers, they're not going to create any more significant traffic impact than was already 
uh, contemplated in the traffic study uh, because both the state road and our access are designed, access and circulation are designed to accommodate tractor trailers. So I'm going to change my method. See, I can learn. I'm going to swear people in so that you can do comments and or questions or both, and then I won't have to worry about it, and it will be on the record, okay? So do you, if you wish to continue, can I swear you in, my Sure. Great. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth so far as it pertains to this application? Yes. Thank you. Please go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, another question is, um, uh, I'm sorry, again, with um, a restaurant conference center, and I'm going to guess that you're planning that you'll probably get some lightings there. And in terms of, you know, studies of noise pollution, traffic, when you've got late night events that, you know, weddings don't really go, you know, midnight or after, um, and mitigating any of that, because you do have residential areas, including, you know, Gifford, um, senior living, so have you looked into that? We haven't conducted a specific noise study, but um, the majority of the time, any events that are going to happen on the property are going to be indoors. There will be the occasional outdoor event, um, but that is located in the portion of the site that's most remote from any other kind of development. So um, those events are going to be uh, restricted by both local noise ordinances and as we go through the Act 250 process, they, they have their own um, noise standards. So in terms of the operation of the site, um, certainly they will plan to abide by all those standards uh, in terms of noise. Um, you know, the traffic impacts, you know, for events, if there's an event that utilizes the entire site, it may be possible that they need to provide some traffic control at the site, but the traffic study is looking at a specific set uh, of agreed upon conditions in which you analyze traffic so that you can compare it um, from project to project um, fairly. Uh, so, you know, we hired a professional traffic engineer to conduct that study, and the conclusion is that there's little to no impact on traffic congestion at the site. Um, do you, do we know what this restaurant is? Is this strictly a, is this like a family restaurant? Is this a restaurant and bar? The uh, tenant for the restaurant hasn't been selected yet. Maybe I could um, jump in with a question that I had related to that. So a restaurant without a hotel is not allowed in this district. It's allowed as an accessory use to the hotel. Is there any chance that the hotel would be constructed without the restaurant? Or is no, this a project that is whole? It's whole. OK, thank it's you. Whole. Thank you. Hilton wants to see a restaurant there. Very good. Thank you. Milo, back to you. Are you done and for now? Question. No. Who, yep. Who's responsible for policing that area? Would that be state police, Orange County Sheriff? State police and Sheriff Department. Thank you. Um, so next question and or comment. Would you, may I swear you in? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth so far as it pertains to this application? Thank you. Would you state your name, please? My name is Gina Shabbat. Thank you, Gina. And I have a question pertaining back to the lighting. Yep, please. Um, we had a review meeting last month about the aesthetics of the building. What was that board called? Hold the microphone. The, uh, the, the uh, design review advisory yes, committee? We went to that Dry, yes. <laughs> and they had mentioned in that meeting about the possibilities of putting motion sensor lights at least in the back part of the building to mm -hmm. keep down some of the lighting. I did hear that mentioned at the meeting this afternoon, but again, it was a maybe and an if. Um, my question is is this something you are going to do? And if not, what would stop you from being able to do that? I think it's the pleasure of the board and the applicant as to whether the board would require that as a condition of the permit or whether the applicant is willing to commit to providing it. Um, as a representative of the applicant, I can't commit them to it, so uh, that's where we are on that. Okay, but it was recommended from the other board? I believe it was recommended from the other board? It's not in their written decision. It, that was not in their written decision, um, but we, we hear the comment. Um, gotcha. Thank you. Uh, can I just make a quick comment? Here? Sure, Paul. We really want to ensure the safety of our customers that right. are coming there. We want people to feel comfortable on the site 
that it's a secure site. And one of the ways of doing that is by lighting. Understood. Thank you. Um, by the way, I'll, I will come back to the people that I didn't swear in who I was demanding just do questions. Obviously, we learned from that technique, so I will come back to you with the comments. Other questions and or comments? Yep. Can we state if someone's a resident of Randolph or Braintree? Um, well, it's a public meeting. Um, they don't need to do that, but okay. if you people wish to, it would be nice, in addition to knowing your name, where you're from. That what would be great. Clarification. Yes. Uh, the state statute actually says that uh, parties involved in this discussion have to be Randolph residents oh. or owners of property in Randolph. So Thank you. It would be important to state that they are Randolph residents. Right That's my personal lawyer and town manager. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, I, I did not realize that, so you can learn. See, I've learned two things tonight. Um, okay, so please state where you're from, and if you're not a resident of Randolph, I think you've got to ask for, for permission to do that. So go ahead. Thank you, Larry Rivet, mm -hmm. the Green Tree Hill part of Green Tree, and uh, uh, three questions about lighting, um, and I, I do thank you for covering most of my concerns, and uh, I feel good about what you said. Um, uh, winter, uh, uh, I, I saw one picture from the uh, east, you know, the east was April, but um, so from, from my vantage point, so uh, uh, it is possible that I'm going to get uh, other people from that side might get, actually anywhere, might get better views in the winter than they do when there's foliage. Uh, have, has this been addressed? Uh, because I didn't really, I mean, yeah, I mean, especially like the, the trees in the back of the restaurant, maple, uh, red maples, um, they're practically not going to be there in the winter. Uh, and that's just one example. So I would ask about you know, what, what is planned to uh, help save for the lack of foliage. So all of the views of the restaurant and, and the, all of the views and the entire view study were taken with no foliage. So what you see in the pictures is what you're going to see when there's no foliage. Um, additionally, um, switch to the landscaping plan here. Uh, oh, there it is. Oops. These uh, three trees here are spruce trees, so they're going to provide year-round screening. Um, and then once you get to the north of the spruce tree area, there's uh, some significant leaf thick. Uh, they are deciduous trees, but there's a significantly thick area of Chidam that will provide some amount of screening in the winter as well. So, so the, uh, the idea of properly baffling the fixtures so that there's nothing <laughs> over the, the property boundaries, and that, that'll cover a lot of that for lighting as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, okay, next next issue is color of the lights. Has that been mentioned? Uh, that has not been uh, mentioned. The lumens have been mentioned, but not the coloration of them. <laughs> they were going to be LEDs, I understand. As long as they're not orange. Okay. Oh, they're definitely not orange. Thank you. Um, for point of information is that uh, the chair had mentioned that if the non Randolph president would speak, that. And then we got one. Yeah. It's, yeah. I um, request the chair, you know, for time considerations. Yes. Priority. Yes. I'm trying to get a sense of how many more people we're getting. I, I feel like we're doing pretty well, but how many more people would like to either do comments or questions? I see a few more hands. It's not too bad. Um, all right, let's do, uh, I think that if we can limit people to a couple of minutes at most, and we'll let you do another question. However, since you're not from Randolph, um, does anyone on the board have an objection to hearing from people who are not from Randolph at the moment? Why don't we, in the interest of time, get people from, well, this gentleman, let's let him finish. And yep. then let's uh, turn to Randolph residents and, um, uh, and see how we are on time. And Great. More questions. 
Yeah. Ranger residents are elsewhere. I agree. Right. I think, okay. I, I think that makes sense. So go ahead and ask your next question, which will be your last question at the moment. Just to finish the, the current one, yeah. it's going to be a neutral, like a, a whitish type yes. of color. Yes. Um, it's certainly something that is considered by the lighting engineer. Not going to be a sodium vapor. No, no, no. They're all LEDs. They're all LEDs. <laughs> okay. That, that was, and then one more. Um, you brought up the, the yes, driveway. Yes, I've heard. And then there will, there will be a couple of lights that will be visible in front of it. <clears throat> um, what's wrong with having lower lights along the, along the entrance that, that are less visible? Really, all you need to see is the road to get in, and even if you don't have your headlights on. Uh, so, so the, the maximum sure the maximum mounting height for any of the lights inside is 20 feet. That's low yeah. for parking lot lighting. It's it's not going to be like on a telephone pole. They're they're pretty. You know when you see a 20 foot high light, you think oh those are low. Although although along the, the driveway is possible to have just very low. Yeah. Well, the, the problem is then you need a lot more of them. So the, the higher the light is, the more evenly. It, it distributes light over the area you're trying to light. Um, can I make a further comment on lighting? Yeah. Um, I just wanted to um, illustrate uh, on this lighting plan. I gotta get a little closer. Yeah, you can all see those numbers from back there, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's super easy, yeah. right? If you can zoom, Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, well, here, I, can, I know how to fix it. Oh, now we can see there the numbers. So um, you can see that around the edges of the property, the light is, there's really no spillover. I mean, this is even the edge of the property. This is kind of the edge of the wood line, maybe, um, between the site and Route 66. So the, the, the optics of the light and the placement of the light are really designed so that there, there is no uh, spillover of the light outside of the area that we're intending to light. So you can see within you know, so if, if that's a nine foot parking space, this distance is probably at most 25 feet uh, outside the parking lot. We're at virtually zero light mm. around the edge of the parking lot. And those are lumens, Brian? Those are foot candles. Foot candles. Foot candles, okay, thanks. Yes. Yep. yep. So, and you can see even, even in this area, the, the light throw is all forward into the site and there's very little spillover to the back. The optics of these lights are, are quite good that way nowadays. So okay. I just wanted to emphasize that though there's a lot of lights, they're all focused on lighting the site and the very little of it is going off of the site, even within our property. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, I saw some hands over here before. Yeah, let's go let's go back here. Are you from Randolph? Yes. Okay. By the way, if you're I understand Braintree, Brookfield, things like that, but if you're from Morrisville, you gotta get a life if you're here. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yes. Uh, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth so far as it pertains to this application? I did. Would you state your name, please, for the record? Tom Harris from Brook Street in Randolph. And my question relates to the market study. Is there anything, any data in the market study that demonstrates or sheds light on the ancillary economic benefits to the surrounding community of this project, including the addition to the grant list? <coughs> Paul, would you like to take that one? I there wasn't anything answer. specific to the effect on the ground rescue. Nothing specific, yeah. thank you. Yeah, but, okay. And by the way, the it's economic the viability of the project yeah. and that Hampton and Hilton would get behind it. No. Not what the impact would be. Yeah. And you know, so just to be clear, that, that those are not among the criteria that we're con that we consider. Yeah. Obviously, an important factor, and uh, Act 250 will consider that some of that for the region, but not here. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. I didn't even need to swear you in, however, because you didn't make a comment. You just uh, asked a question. <laughs> good job. I, I phrased my comment as a question. Very good. Let's go back. <laughs> uh, thank you. My name is Bob Haynes. I am the director of Green Mountain Economic Development Corporation. I'm not a resident of Randolph, I'm a resident of Norwich. Uh, we own some property, our organization. Yeah, can I, I swear still swear you in though? Because even right. though you're from Norwich, yeah. Um, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth so far as it pertains to this application? I do. Okay, thank you, Bob. Um, so I, I would like to uh, offer our strong support for this project on behalf of the economic vitality of the town of Randolph uh, and the, some of the institutions, including Vermont Technical College, um, and the business uh, community that we spend a lot of time 
working with. So um, I've been familiar with the site for some time. We have considered it for some other uses that we did not uh, deem appropriate there. I think the solution that they came up with is quite um, successful and appealing. I think it's financeable. I think the fact that they have a, a market flag um, that will fly there um, supports those statements, and I commend them for a very sensitive uh, design that I think addresses the, the concerns that you have, which are very appropriate. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Other questions or comments? Yes. I do. Yes. <laughs> you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so far as it pertains to this application. I do. Great. And you notice that in the expedience and interest of time, I'm not asking people to raise their other right hand. You can raise your left hand. It's okay. <laughs> um, I'm curious. Um, you mentioned that there's a the uh, state of Vermont has been doing um, assessments um, and mapping of aquifers. And I don't know if it's been done for Randolph or not, but it would seem to me that that would be appropriate to ask to have that done because, uh, because of these other uses that have come on. At some point, particularly with climate change, we are going to have less water. And we do not want to have a situation where either the hotel or any other uh, project here, such as the other ones that are in Randolph Center, or the private homes lose their water. So that's something I wanted to make a comment about. The second thing is, um, I'm, I'm wondering why an 80-room or 79-room hotel in Randolph, we do not, the nearest ski resort is 45 minutes in several different directions. Uh, Montpelier has uh, hotels and things like that, and it's much more of a destination, as does Snow, at, uh, Stowe, and as does uh, uh, around Killington, uh, Rutland, and so forth. And I can see a use for this uh, hotel for the VTC graduation, for the um, New World Festival, and for weddings and so forth, but I don't see uh, that many weddings happening around here. I know that our daughter's wedding was 21 years ago, and we would have had it indoors in this conference room, not outside in a tent, if it had been available. So I'm worried about the effect on Randolph businesses, successful Randolph businesses, such as some of our restaurants and uh, tent, uh, tent companies. So that's the second question. <coughs> Thank you. I don't know if you if there's anything there you want to respond to, or if we just I, go on. I think we've addressed the water supply yeah. issue, and I don't think the economics of the hotel are relevant. I think we're getting more than the zoning yeah. documents. Uh, I'm going to run this meeting the way I wish, so I, um, I am going to be very tolerant of people asking questions or making comments, and the zoning board will address the zoning regulations in our decision. But this is an opportunity for people to express um, whatever it is, and I don't expect them to have read the 200 pages of regulations to make a comment or question. Anyone else? Yes, we'll go to the back. Could you grab a microphone? Uh, I can talk really loud. Is that, that, okay? that, that, yeah. that does work. Um, OK, great. Can you raise your right hand? Yes, sir. My name is Chandler Polanka. I live in uh, Randolph. I'm a, res I'm, not, I'm a resident. I'm not a property owner. It's OK. Um, Do you I, swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth so far as it pertains to this application? Yes, I do. Great. Um, I wanted to address uh, a comment that I heard that we are going to be receiving less water with uh, climate change. My understanding is the Northeast that is not true. We're supposed to be getting more water. Um, I'm not sure where it's coming from, probably the southeast, but my understanding is the northeast will receive more water than less. Um, so I just wanted to uh, speak up on that point. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm going to go to the back over there. Yes, sir. Hi, my name is Ken Goss. I live in Randolph. Thank you, Ken. Uh, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so far as it pertains to this application? I do. Thank you, Ken. It's just a comment in reference to some of these other comments. Um, as far as the need for a hotel, I was a member of a committee, an unofficial official committee, uh, about eight or ten years ago, by a group of the businesses here in Randolph to see what we could do about making Randolph better. We did a survey, and I was personally part of that survey. We went as far as the uh, law school in Royalton, 
and of course VTC, Chandler itself, uh, the hospital, the uh, GW Plastics, and all the businesses on Beanville Road. And we definitely, everybody unanimously said we needed a hotel here for their business of, of acquaintances and, and things like that. And even the local businesses in downtown all agreed that we needed. This was the time when Dell Thompson was trying to build a motel, which is now Gifford's uh, outbuilding uh, area. Uh, he finally gave that up a year and built, owned and built a restaurant instead. But uh, just my comment. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. I think I can speak loud enough. Uh, James Larson, I'm in the East Valley. That's part of Randolph. Yes, at the moment, <laughs> yes. So I'll let like this gentleman's comment. Wait, wait. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth so far as it pertains to this application. I do. You see how well I do that? I got that memorized. Yes. <laughs> so I'll echo this gentleman's comment. Um, I think most of the business owners in the, in the town will agree that we sorely need some kind of body. <laughs> <laughs> Kind of lodging. Um, you know, I, 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 I give the, the woman here uh, some credit. You know, she's a woman after my own heart. But it does take longer than 20 minutes to get to my period. <laughs> the closest hotel is Berlin, Mount Montpelier. To the north, the closest hotel is White River. There's got to be something in between. Snow machine traffic in the morning time. It's a great idea. That is going to really inject some business to the past trails. It's going to help the businesses of Randolph, the small businesses of Randolph. We've been needing a hotel for three or four years. Ever since the pre selling place, we got nothing. One question is as far as the Restaurant goes, is there a chance that a local business? It would be a preference, yes. Yeah. So you take a look at the restaurant, or is it prescribed by Hampton? That it has to be it's not prescribed by Hampton, that it has to be a chain or something like that. So there's another opportunity. Mm -hmm. We have to, someone has to embrace the opportunity who's a restaurant operator. So that's what we're trying to find. Yeah. We need it. Okay, thank you. So just for, for the record, since this is all on the record, um, it may interest you to know that, that the, the Development Review Board and the zoning regulations do not um, address a need for a particular project or not. We rely very much on private business and entrepreneurial uh, spirit to determine what's needed and when. So um, to the extent that this issue is related to items in the town plan, we will be we, looking at it. But if you tell me, um, you know, if, if four people came to propose hotels in various parts of the town, they would all be reviewed by the same zoning rules within the district that they apply, and the need for all those would not be, not be addressed. The same is true for any other business, gas stations, dollar stores, anything else that you might think of. So. Um, I just want to, yeah, I mean, I appreciate hearing the comments about the economic impact and the things that, from a town plan standpoint, you think might be relevant, but the reality is that's not within our purview to decide whether it's needed or not. So, um, let me go to the back over here. Yep, go ahead. Uh, yep. Um, I'm just going to make this quick thing, Nicola Randolph. Uh, Hi, Jamie. Uh, you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth so far as it pertains to this application? I, I do, and uh, I'll make it quick because uh, I know the need isn't an issue here, but just echoing uh, those comments about older surveys that were done on the need issue. Our Randolph region uh, re energized economic development committee recently redid a study of businesses, uh, or 24 representative businesses in the, the area. The hotel came up as one of the number one uh, concerns of what those businesses expressed is what was needed for their uh, future success. And so I want, if anybody would like to copy that survey, I can provide them a copy. If uh, folks are interested in need, they're in contact me, I can get okay. that to them. Thank you. Yes, sir. Go ahead. 
Uh, I need no mic. It's right behind Dwayne, you. I am Dwayne Shabbat. I don't need mic. Dwayne Shabbat. Swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth so far as it pertains to this application. Yes, I do. Thank you. Okay. What I'm trying to find out, I understand the business end of it. I'm in the South property, right beside the desert. Nobody likes to see you know, but I'm exactly right there looking at the project. My question is, I keep hearing, and I don't know which board I can bring this up to, is we are concerned about everything around you know, businesses, economy, the traffic and everything. Is there any rights for the, the people or any concerns about the people who are actually affected by it right, right. there? Is there anything? So uh, there is a character of the neighborhood criteria, things like that. And I read a part about lighting and its effect on nearby residential. But the reality is most of these criteria are based on how uh, the town is affected from public spaces, not private. And um, traffic certainly is an issue, both internal and external. Yeah. But it, I'm the one who gets almost clipped all the time going out there. Uh, well, going I, out. if this goes forward, you'll have company. But I think yeah, um, I so. But, uh, but I just wanted to make clear that that's a distinction. Most of our rules are re related from a public community standpoint, as opposed to a private person's yeah, I've been to each one of these boards, mm -hmm. and, and I bring up the question about uh, you guys coming to us property owners and working with us, <coughs> and then I hear your rebuttal to one of them that it's not really your concern because you're concerned about other areas. You're not concerned about the individual property owners around, or are you concerned with us? Are you willing to work with us? or is it just a thing to say, yeah, we're going to get with the neighbors and we're going to try to work with them? Or you don't have to. Which one is that? Are you, do you want to answer for the applicant, Paul? Um, I did first see your wife, Gina, and I let her know that the balloon was going up to address the issues. Yeah, that was the, the second time, this time here, not the time before it was up. Well, the time I didn't know. Measured. I don't want to get into it, but that mm -hmm. balloon came that Friday morning, and I didn't know about it. And it went up, and it came down that weekend. I had no problem with balloons. Yeah. What I'm having problems with is I, I, as a property owner, I feel that it would be an obligation of a yeah. big place to deal with the, the the property owners there. The other thing is we have a property line right there in the back side there. What stops? The residents that want to walk around in these beautiful fields and see the beautiful trio, then coming up my property line mm -hmm. and visiting up in my place. Is it, do I have to put posted signs? Do I have to load a shotgun or posted signs? Um, so yeah, uh, uh, look, um, good good question. And and as I mentioned, the kind of our overall thing is is related to. Um, most of our rules and regulations are related to uh, views and impact from public standpoint, but we always encourage a developer to get with the neighbors and see if they can work out differences. And it is important still for us to hear about your concerns regarding lighting or, uh, or, um, or landscape planning or things that could make um, to minimize the impact of this project on your property. I, and and I, I agree with the owners that we need a hotel here. I work at Norwich University. I retired from the Marine Corps. They're training officers. So I believe, and I've been part of this, this uh, community for mm -hmm. 23 years, and mm -hmm. I've given a lot to this community. Yep. So I, I think, you know, just a common courtesy right. uh, to help us along the way so we know what to do, whether to sell a house or move out of here. Well, as I say, from a, from a board standpoint, we encourage applicants to work with neighbors and to discuss their issues with them and try and accommodate them as best they can in the site plan. Do you have anything you want to add to that? Um, yes. I have called the Shabbats. Yep. I have spoken to them. Okay, so, good. Um, Sounds like I, I you could do it again. Now. Did I not call you, Jim, <clears throat> last year? Um, you call about this. Okay, I'm going to... I never heard, heard anything until this last time. Okay, um, obviously a communication issue that is an opportunity there or whatever, um, it would be great, but not relevant necessarily to the board stuff. Any other comments or questions from people? Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, I'll 
try and turn it back to a higher note. Excellent. <laughs> but I Take do respect mic. all the landowners. Oh. Swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth so far as it pertains to this application. Uh, I do. Would you state your name, please, for the Zach record? Freeman. I'm okay. in Braintree. Um, and I do respect uh, the imparting the landowners. Um, I did hear a little bit of um, dealing with light infringement and setbacks from property lines, so it seems to me that they're uh, addressing some of the concerns of the area residents. Um, I just wanted to echo what Bob Haynes said about the design. I'm in support of this. Um, I'm on the board. I was on the board of directors of Frosta, and now I'm a paid director of a uh, nonprofit um, outdoor recreation group here in Randolph in the Central Vermont area. And I believe the design of this building fits into the landscape very well. It's very hidden, and um, I give them uh, props for that. So I just want to gen general support. I echo what quite a bit of the prior um, statements have said about the need for it. Um, I think one thing to think about, too, with this is this hotel will net more people in general to, to this area that will end up trickling downtown. Um, and so I think there's a lot of um, excitement about it. They will. So, no, but you can ride a bike downhill. <laughs> spoken yet and then I can just quickly come back. Yes, ma'am, go ahead. Yep. Please get a microphone. Do I, do yep. I? Thank you. Yeah, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth so far as it pertains to this application? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Please state your name. Please state your name. Yep. Okay. Um, I kudos to the work that's been done here today. I think a lot of you know ten parts of it today. My concern is the height. Um, you know, when you look at, at the balloon at 50 feet and take away a third of that to you know, down to 35 feet, um, I have some concerns with, with how high that is. That, that starts to put the roof line into the foreground visual coming down to um, 6610. And certainly from my property, which is a little bit of a piece on, on that. Um, you know, I have questions about the needs. I drove through Rotland to get here today. And it's boarded up with housing and digital palace and, and I, I don't want that. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else? Yes. Um, hi, Cynthia Kulichi. Second try around, then I got Resident of Randolph. Yep. Uh, I swear to tell the truth. You've already been sworn in, I believe. Oh, no, I haven't. That's no? what I'm Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to get sworn in. Continue to raise your left hand, then. Uh, Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, right? I swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth as regards the to this application. these proceedings and this application. Perfect. Uh, uh, I asked the question before. I'm not sure whether I need to re-ask it to be, get on the record about the market survey, whether that did or did not include the other 80 forums that are going to be uh, coming up on the market soon. Uh, as a, a second comment, uh, in terms of need, it seems to go between the stuff this gentleman was working on 10 or 20 years ago, and Samus, Sam Samus had a, 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 a building permit out for hotels uh, in the area for you know 20 or 30 years or more. So if this, there was this great need, I think it may have been fulfilled in some sense, if, if, if the need were really there. I'm not really sure how that's, you know, other people have spoken to it, it wasn't really my main concern, but that's all. Okay, I'm thank you. Concerned. Can I address the question on yes, the market studies? Yep. So the market study did include the proposed hotel in Montpelier. Um, honestly, with the amount of appeals happening there, it's questionable whether the project will even go forward or not. But regardless, um, the market study, and the reason why we presented the market study to this board is that the market study that was has already been done and already been completed is uh, sets the requirement for this specific project of the number of rooms that are required to build a Hampton Inn. <coughs> that is the purpose for talking about the market study. Mm -hmm. It's specific to this project. It's already been done, and it, it requires this project to have 79. The market study was 80, but 79 is acceptable. 79 rooms. Okay. Thank you. Um, Yes, Milo, one more time. Did I swear you in already? Yeah. 
Yes. yes. Thank you. Go ahead. Um, That's right. You were my first. <laughs> so in the discussion of whether we need a, a hotel here, I don't, you know, I think there's definitely a need for a place for people to stay. One of the biggest concerns is it being at the interstate exit versus downtown. Um, we like to go camping down in Bennington, and we happened in to talk to a guy to find out about the renovation of their downtown. Bennington looks a lot like Randolph. Right now, there's a lot of empty storefronts. Um, interestingly enough, he got there because there was a hotel built three or four miles outside of the downtown, and he came in to manage it. That hotel is now boarded up and gone. And he said that, yes, people stopped going downtown. And so I think that's something that this town really ought to consider. Um, I have his contact information at home. Mm -hmm. um, it seems that, you know, a lot of, this isn't unique to Randolph, but it seems like a lot of towns just don't talk to each other about, you know, what they're doing to revitalize their downtowns. Um, this is happening all over Vermont and, yeah, every, everywhere. Um, we just hate to see the downtown, you know, close down more. Mm -hmm. um, like okay, thank you. Anyone else who hasn't spoken yet? Comments? Looking good. Could I make a comment to that? Yes, you may. Um, I'm a 1987 graduate of Randolph Union High School. I went to college in Wyoming, moved back. I own 22 North Main Street. I've owned it for 22 years. I own the building where the hub is going to be, that we're fixing up downtown. The last thing I want is for the death of Randolph. I moved back to improve Randolph. That's why we're doing this. We're all local people. We're not outside developers. We're local people who are trying to fit the need spent a lot of money doing it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, yeah, we'll close. Um, so I want to, first of all, thank you all very much. Um, are there any other comments or questions from the board that we haven't addressed? Okay. Does anyone from the board consider that we need any more information that isn't already on the record here? That we, any reason that we should continue the public hearing? Otherwise, I would take a motion to close the public hearing and move this application to deliberative session. So moved. I do want to make just a comment for people that are, that are here tonight and think, is this the first time we're seeing this stuff? And the answer is no. There's a, I just want to make sure it's clear that there was a preliminary meeting month, maybe two months ago, where we saw some preliminary drawings of the, the earlier versions of these, preliminary views of what the building would look like. Um, so, so the applicants heard from us then, and we've been thinking about this and asking questions um, for, for a couple months on this. So we're not uh, 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 blazing through a review of a really significant project. I didn't want anyone to think that we are. No. So um, we have a motion to close the public hearing and move to deliberative session. Do I have a second for that? I'll second. Move second, second. Move second. Move second. <laughs> no, you can't second your own motion, but I think I got one and two here, so I got two here. Yep, very good. Um, any further discussion for that? I just, um, before we do this, I, I do wanna, I wanna thank you all. I think this is a great meeting, good hearing. I appreciate people's comments and the ability to uh, to constructively discuss this stuff. It makes me feel good about everything about Randolph and Braintree and North Hill. And if there was anyone from Morrisville, I'm sorry. It was just <laughs> um, but you're all terrific, and thank you very much for the participation. We appreciate it.